Hi, Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising, here with your daily tip. And today's daily tip is going to, I'm doing it in video for a little change. And I thought we'd have some fun here today. And I got this idea from Jeff Brooks, who sent out a blog recently and said, asked the question, is your fundraising letter too much like a family Christmas letter? Well, you want to avoid the family holiday letter approach. And here are some things not to do. Writing for one audience. He says all the people on your Christmas list may be similar. Friends and families who know you at least well enough to, to connect with once a year and want to catch up on all your news. But your donors are so different. You know this. That's why you segment and have different messages. You have your new donors, your lapsed donors, your low dollar donors, your major gift high end donors. Each group has different needs and different levels of connection. So to have a successful year end communication or year end email, you need to take that into consideration and treat them differently. You want to connect on an appropriate connection level. Ah, well, you know, in number two in the Christmas letter, you talk, 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 blah, blah, blah about yourself and your family. Ooh, you don't want to do that in a donor email or a donor letter. Your relatives may think that all of your attainments and accomplishments are wonderful but your donors want to know what they can accomplish through you. Important point. So you don't want to, as, as Jeff Brooks says, don't trot out your, your achievements because it's simply irrelevant in fundraising. Making people feel good about your mission and what you can do together is absolutely your goal in your holiday communications with your donors. Okay, so point number three, writing to people who have lost touch. Jeff says that reconnecting may be an important function of Christmas letters, but fundraising needs a more strategic approach. Reactivating lapsed donors is a different activity from cultivating your active donors. You know that, and you know yesterday, in our daily tip yesterday, we talked about the possibilities and, and the, the best practices for right now in these last 17 days of 2016 fundraising, how to connect with those lapsed donors. So you might want to review that. Okay, fourth point. You not doing something to stand out from the crowd. And Jeff says, we personally know most of the people who send us Christmas letters. That makes them stand out, even though they're all pretty similar. Few of our donors know us that well. Our letter is one of a bunch that they may have trouble distinguishing. So, you want to make sure that you stand out from the crowd. And the most important point of all is you want to make your year-end communication heartfelt, personal, and thanking them gratitude of all the things that you've accomplished together and what you can do together in the future to make the world a better place. So that's for starters for your year in communications. Next, let's look at a possibility of how to tweak your thank you letters to make them really perfect. All right, hold on. I'll be right back with that. Okay, let's talk about the magic of a great thank you. I just saw this recently in the last couple of days by Roger Craver, and he's at The Agitator, and always such great stuff. And so this came through, the magic of a great thank you, and he asked the question, uh, what is your thank you uh, for your nonprofit like? Is it like this? Does it go like this? 
Thank you for making your generous donation. What we do wouldn't be possible without people like you. You can learn more about the impact you are having at BoringNonprofit.org. And that's that's what everyone else's thank you letter sounds like. So he said that the very next day they got a thank you that they thought was really wonderful. It was from Adrian Salmon. I'll give you the link to this. And with Adrian's permission, he, Roger wrote about it. And here, it, it, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of it because you're going to love this. So it starts out, here's the before laughter, uh, before letter, the before. Dear Mr. Potter, on behalf of Hogwarts, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizard, Wizardry, we would like to express our gratitude for, yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, they changed it. Dear Harry, thanks to you, an owl will fly this summer. Whoa, what a difference, right? Okay, second paragraph. Hogwarts is one of the most prestigious schools of magic and was rated first in the global rankings by Time's Good Magic School Guide. After. Do you remember the day your first owl arrived from Hogwarts? Whether you came from a magical family or not, I'm sure the excitement you felt was the same. Isn't that perfect? Okay, paragraph number three before. The Dumbledore Scholarship provides financial assistance to those students for whom a magical education would otherwise be out of the question. Blah, blah, blah. Here's how they change that. You have just given that feeling to a new student who will start at Hogwarts this autumn thanks to your gift. Thank you for ensuring, once again, that help at Hogwarts will always be given to those who ask for it. Yours in magic. Isn't that perfect? Well, I think I'm, I'll put the link into this so you can see it. And I, hopefully it will help you give a little bit of magic to your year in thank you. Well, thanks for having been here today. I am Joy Olson of Blockbuster Fundraising with your daily tip. We don't have very many days left now to 2016 fundraising. Can you believe it? We started way back on September 22nd. It is now December 15th, and we only have 17 days left of fundraising. Whoa! So good luck. Happy fundraising. Stay healthy, stay happy, and tune in again tomorrow for another super tip. We appreciate you being here. It's been fun, and now I am going to stop recording. Bye-bye. Thanks.